Hey guys, Tara here from Recovering Book Order, and today is very exciting because my The Joy Magical subscription is here and it is the burrow theme. So we're going to unbox that. Um, we're also going to go through a, a kind of mid-sized Ollie's haul from um, a trip my daughter and I took the other day to Ollie's just to check and see what books were in store. So here is the box. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. There are boxes for these magical editions, which I should say, so they're magical edition crates are a quarterly subscription. So each month, I'm sorry, each quarter is a different theme. So the first theme was Diagon Alley. This theme is The Burrow, which come on, let's be real. Who does not want to live at The Burrow? <laughs> okay. Um, and then next quarter's theme is um, The Big Seven. So it's like the seven main characters, everything in the box is around them. So down below, I will leave a link that um, if you are interested in Owl Crate, Magical Edition, anything like that, um, it's just a referral code. I'm not like an affiliate with Owl Crate or anything, but I don't know. I might get something if you <laughs> click on that link to subscribe. I honestly have no idea. Um, so yeah. Okay. So we're going to open this big boy today and I'm so excited. It came yesterday and I purposely did not open it just so that I could open it with you guys. So cracking the seal. Oh my gosh. Wait, look at the I'll cover my address, but look at the cute little frog. <laughs> the bottom of the box. These boxes are so cute. You really can definitely like reuse them and, and use them for storage just because they're fun so all right so we open it up and here is what we see inside so first thing we've got our witch weekly magazine and oh look gilvery lockhart is on the front um and this is our spoiler so i'm not going to look in there at this point one of my favorite things about the Litjoy Magical Editions especially is the packaging. The packaging is just, is stellar. So, okay, let's just start out here. So for example, look at this cute box. Is that not like the cutest? I, I There is just so much thought that goes into everything that they do. So this says, it is denoming spray. Take a sneak peek at uh, what that looks like. So it's nice and bubble wrap there. So hopefully it will not break. Oh, look at that. It is so cute. Oh, and it does work. Um, and I can feel air too. So you may actually be able to put stuff in here and, and use it. Yeah, and it does come off. The top does come off like that. Um, I will not be using it because it's going to find its house up on my Harry Potter shelf. That is really cute. Okay. So that is our first item. Let's see. What is this? Okay. I think we have a candle. Look how pretty. Oh, I like that. Magnificent marmalade. All right. Let's, oh, I hate to take that off. I want to smell it. Let's see. Eh, it's okay. Not my favorite. I think I'm probably not going to burn it, but I will put it on my shelf because I think it's packaged really pretty. I like that. Don't love the smell, but you know, scents are different for everyone. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> I love this. You have to excuse me because my hand is still recovering and I do not have my whole grip back yet. In my left hand. Oh, I love this hat. And I can't put it on because my hair is going to get all messed up. But will you? <laughs> oh, I love fun crocheted or knitted hats like this. Look, it has this little 
on there. <gasps> I love this. Love, love. So cute. I like when it comes down and we'll cover my ears even more with that. <gasps> Ooh, that might be my favorite item. We shall see. Okay, moving along. Right there. Ooh. That makes noise. I hear ringing. Oh, it's the clock. I knew there was going to be a representation of the Weasley's clock, and oh, is that cute. Oh, that's really cute. Let me look at that. Oh, I hope that's focusing okay. That is adorable, and it does actually work, too. It's supposed to light up. Maybe I have to put, oh, but I have to put batteries in it. Once I put batteries in it, it will actually work. Unless it, oh, that's the whole, the whole thing you get. Ring, ring. Oh, that's cute. It's really nice quality too, I have to say. Let's just put that, put that back there for now. All right, what else do we have? Okay, we've got, it looks like a pencil case. Oh, <laughs> it's like the, the mail that uh, Ron sent to Harry, because he had no idea how much postage you were supposed to use. So it's like the envelope he sent to them for a pencil case. That's cute. It's like a, um, oh, it's not, it's lined inside. And I guess, I don't want to say silicone, like a rubber, almost rubbery on the outside. That's cute. That's a good idea. All right. Oh, look. Okay. We have this nice little bag. Something is in here. This is nice and reusable. I like that. Oh, how cute. Oh, it's a recipe holder. A recipe book. Look, it says Weasley's Family Recipes. Adorable. Oh, and look on the back. So cute. And then in the front, there is a recipe card. I wish it came with more recipe cards. It just has that one. Kind of stinks. I guess. I guess I can just make copies of that one and print out other ones to put in here. But that's really nice. And this is wooden. Very nice, very nice quality. I will definitely be reusing this bag. Okay, oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, this is fabulous. Look, it's a Weasley family portrait. Oh, I love it. They're all in their Weasley sweaters. <gasps> that is so cute. Oh, this artist is awesome. I don't know if you can see the faces are just wonderful. I mean, greatly rendered. Oh, I love this. This might be one of my favorite like art pieces that we've gotten in the box. That is great. All right. Oh, yes, that's right. I forgot we have the collectible coins. And these, the coins all come in this real cute pouch here, which I think I left my first one in the pouch just because I like the pouch. All right, Loomis. See that? Ignore my hand there, sorry. Loomis Wand Lightning Charm. Wand Lightning Charm. Now on the back, looks like that. Cute. All right, so that's the second, the second charm. Second queen charm in the series. All right, then I, I love these photo booth bookmarks that they're doing. Let me take it out of here. I have the one from the first book up there and it's like Harry and Hagrid at Diagon Alley the first time he goes. Um, so this one is Fred and George, the Weasley Wizard Wheezes photo booth. And there's Pygmy Pups there too. 
it's not cute. I, I am like a big fan of photo booths, so I think this is just a wonderful idea that they're doing this. I think it's super cute. And then we have this print of all things burrow. I like that. I love this artist. I'm not, I'm, I guess I'll have to, all right, we'll, we'll look into the spoiler thing after this so we can check out who the artist is. Okay, last, oh, this is cool. All right, last thing. Oh, let me take it out of its packaging here real quick. It is, are you ready? Molly and Arthur's marriage certificate. That's a really cute idea. Oh. So apparently their anniversary is June 13th, 1968. All right, interesting. I did not know that piece of Potter trivia. Now I do. All right, so that is our Burrow LaJoy Magical Crate. And I really like it. I really like everything. Um, I would say that my favorite is the hat. I think the hat in this picture. I love this Weasley family portrait. This is just fabulous. I might actually put this out in my living room. I mean, they're the, isn't, aren't they the family that everybody wants to be a part of? Oh, yeah. So the, I would say those are my favorite things. Um, my least favorite is probably the candle, just because I don't, I really don't like the way it smells. Um, but I, the packaging is cute. So, yeah. So that's our magical crate. Oh, I'm happy with it. I like it. I like it. And I will save the crate. Um that it comes in. I'll probably use it to store um, some like crochet stuff that I'm working on along with its sister crate from the first box. All right. Okay. So that was the LitJoy Magical Edition. So cute. Okay. Moving on to the Ollie's Book Haul. So um, it had been a little bit, a little while since I had gone to Ollie's. Purposely went with the with the point of looking at their book section, I just discovered, I thought Ollie's was like everywhere. Apparently it is not. It might just be limited to like the Eastern coastal states. I'm, I'm not really sure. But if you do have an Ollie's, they had some really good things there this time, including some books I had already purchased at a higher price. So let me show you what I got. I had a 15% off everything coupon um, it's like their Valentine's Day coupon, which was the reason that I went because I, you know, can get some, some money off. So the first thing I found was, oh, okay. I have to, oh, and the Anne of Green Gables box set. And I have been looking for a pretty version of the rest of the set. Um, I have Anne of Green Gables in the Puffin and Blooms edition, which... I love and I really really you know I would like them to come out with the rest of the series in that edition but I don't think that's gonna happen I've not heard anything about anything like that so I have been looking for the rest of the series because I want to read the rest so I found this one and it is really it's really pretty I like that it's not it's a little bit bigger than mass market paperback size um, so like here's Anne of Avonlea I just think that the artist that did the covers really pretty. So that's that. Um, like here's the first one. It's not cute. So anyway, got these. Ended up paying um, $16.99 for the entire set, which is a great price since each of them. $11.99 for each of these books individually in a normal store, typically. So that was a great find. Okay. Um, also found The Dream Daughter by Diane Chamberlain. Found this one um, marked for $2.99, but got it for like $2.43, I think is what it was after the coupon. So less than $3. And I have only heard just amazing things about this book. We were just talking about it last night on our bookish besties call for uh with Chris over at books and jams and um so this says this one is about 
a woman who's a widow of the Vietnam War. She's pregnant and she discovers that her unborn daughter has a heart defect and she's told that nothing can be done to help her. Her brother-in-law, who's a physicist and has like a sketchy past, serious sketchy, not sure, um, says that he has a way to save her baby and it's unconventional and it sounds mysterious. I've never read anything by Diane Chamberlain before, but I've only heard wonderful things about her. So great find. All right. Then I found for the same price, um, the girl you left behind by Jojo Moyes. They're in the midst of world war one and her husband, who's an artist had painted the portrait of the main character, Sophie in here. And, one of the new commandments from the German army sees the portrait and becomes obsessed with her. And then um, we move to a century later and get another viewpoint. And so it sounds like multiple timelines, which I'm a big fan of multiple timelines, historical fiction. I love Jojo Moyes. So yeah, that one. Okay. Then I found No One Is Coming To Save Us by Stephanie Powell Watts. Same price again, like $2.43 or something like that. So this is about a guy who goes back to his hometown in North Carolina and he his goal is to pursue his high school sweetheart. Well, she's already taken, married, pregnant. Um, no, I'm sorry, she's not pregnant. She wants to have a baby. And so there must be issues with her getting pregnant and Ava, the high school sweetheart, is frustrated with her life, all that. So it says, um, JJ, who's the guy who goes back, JJ's return quickly stirs up the entire town as the ostentatious wealth he's attained forces everyone to consider the cards they've been dealt. Can they reorient their lives to align with their wishes rather than their current realities, or are they already resigned to the rhythms of the particular lives they lead? Just sounds really good. I had never heard of it before. Um, but I'm interested. Okay, then I got, uh, The Night the Lights Went Out by Karen White. Again, $2.43. You cannot beat these prices. I mean, seriously, it's normally $16. Even without the coupon, it was only $2.99. So, I, I always is like the place to shop. So, the Huffington Post says about this one, one of White's best books ever, and it is a fresh it is as fresh as a new mowed lawn. She gives her readers a little humor, a little drama, a little romance, and a little murder. Put them together and they spell fascinating. I think it sounds fascinating. Okay. Three more. We got The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda. Um, this one I paid like three three and some change for originally. Originally $26.99, marked down to $3.99, and then with my coupon. Um, so this is by the woman who wrote All the Missing Girls, which I did not read, but always hear really good things about. It says, Little Port, Maine has always felt like two separate towns, an ideal vacation enclave for the wealthy whose summer homes line the coast, and a simple harbor community for the year-round residents whose livelihoods rely on service to the visitors. So I think what happens is a friendship develops between one of these really wealthy people and um, one of the workers, and then there's a murder. And who did the, committed the murder? You know, we'll see. All right. I have to say, this this uh, cover is really cool too. It's like the drops of water are raised. Nice, nice touch. Then we got "When Life Gives You Lululemons" by Lauren Weisberger. Uh, this one was three and some change also. And this just sounded fun. Um, Emily Giffen says, "Fearless and hilarious." Lauren Weisberger's latest novel begs to be read poolside with a cocktail, her best since Devil Wars Prada. <laughs> I did not realize that was, this is the author that wrote Devil Wars Prada. Uh, it's blurbed by Jane Green, who I absolutely adore. She said, Lauren Weisberger hilariously skewers affluent suburbia and does so through the cool, calm eyes of the Devil Wears Prada's Emily Charlton. What a delight to meet Miranda Priestley again, and most importantly, have the treat of immersing ourselves in such a witty, well-observed world. Oh, so wait, so is this like a follow-up to the Devil Wars Prada? Oh, it totally is. 
Okay. On the top, it says a devil wears bra in the novel. <laughs> Did not realize that. It's funny, too, because I had literally just thought to myself the other day, because I'm reading, um, right now I'm, I'm reading um, the wig, the witch, B, witch with B, <laughs> the wig, the witch, and the meltdown by Jane Manuel. And in there, as I'm reading it, I I'm, kept thinking, I really need to wear the Tavor's Prada, like it was making me think of that book, because um, he, he brings it up a few times. So, all right, so I guess I'm going to have to read The Devil Wears Prada. Maybe I can listen to that one on audio. Uh, are there other ones in this, in The Devil Wears Prada universe? I had no idea. All right, last one. This is The Sun Does Shine by Anthony Ray Hinton. Uh, again, three and some change. And all I know about this is that it was Krista over at Books and Jams. It was her favorite of 2020. And let's be honest, if it's good enough for Krista, it's good enough for me. So got this one also. Pretty excited whenever I saw it. All right, so there you have it. That was the unboxing of the Lichoy Magical Crate and my Always Haul. So what do you guys think? What do you think about that Magical Crate? Anything in there catch your eye? Um, what about these books? Any of these books that you have read? Should I be prioritizing any of these over other books? Let me know. You know, I love to, to uh, chat with you guys down in the comments. So, yeah. All right. If you uh, like what you see, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more from me, don't forget to, to subscribe. And all right. Bye, guys.